Uh, this is just uh, for some folks that, uh, that are sort of new to uh, some of the things that I put up who didn't watch all the other videos that I did. I essentially started out sort of in chronological order of just introducing myself, um, particularly related to my childhood, because I realized at such a very early age, like as soon as I could read a newspaper, um, actually all you had to do was turn on a radio and I'm picking up on the signaling, but I was getting internal signaling as well through my biotech, which is the operating system of the avatar. Okay, so I knew, you know, by the time I was four and a half, five years old, that I was getting, if you will, thought form algorithms uh, that represent programming. Okay, into the unconscious memory to run a program. Right, so that pretty much tells you you're in a spiritual war, which is an energy war. This is a frequency war, which is a genetic war, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So y you know that you're in a spiritual war. Right? So now you're having to navigate through, as I've always said, what I call a vampiric energy field. It's distorted. So a lot of what I was doing when I was very young is what I call scalar measurements on a 3D axis, if you will. Okay? What I call a 3D axis, which is vectoring, which is vectoring musical scales and then measuring the speed of the scales, because that's actually what it is. You're, me you're measuring speed ratios, okay? Because naturally you're living in harmony and balance and a state of peace with source and everything else it is, right? So when you realize, hey, something's rocking my boat, you know, why am I getting all these signal communications that are distorted? This isn't the energy that I run. What's communicating to me a different frequency to distort the natural waves of the cosmos. So you already know what the natural cosmic order of things, okay, with a musician of the cosmos, right? The first musician, if you will. Um, because you love to be in harmony with the waves. The waves feel so good. So with me, for example, I love the highest speed you can get. Okay, which is the highest state of consciousness that you can experience. So to do that, who do you want to learn from? Those that are already there, which is the highest top of the ladder, right? So that you can move through the cosmos at the highest rate of speed so you can experience everything that is possible to experience in the entire cosmos. So we're experiencers. So naturally, being an experiencer, we don't live in any fear because we know that we are source-derived units of living spirit that is in that light, okay? Which is why it was so difficult for me early in childhood to, uh, how do I put it, experience such heavy density matter because, which is why I'm always giving everything away, to increase my speed, right? So you can imagine as a child what that does, okay? It means, hey, you know, um, you know you're just a little kid, if you will, a child, Realizing, man, I'm not supposed to. I'm not supposed to experience this kind of stuff. I want to get out of here, right? So I think of myself in spirit form, which is in the light, not in the physical matter body. Okay, because you want to zoom at the highest speed your spirit and your state of consciousness can reach, because you are so in love with the cosmos, with everything that you are experiencing at such a high rate of speed. You don't want any obstacles, okay? Which means you don't want any resistance, okay? To slow you down, but when you're going that fast, you're gonna burn up. So you know that you've got an enormous amount of fire and spirit in you, right? And that is to your advantage when you're fighting a spiritual war, because they contaminate the fuck out of us, don't they? Drain our battery. Biofeedback time loops, that's what they are. They want to keep you in a biofeedback time loop in order to do what? You become like a, what I call a grain silo. I asked a guy earlier this afternoon, you know what a grain silo is, right? That's a storage bin. That's an energy storage bin. Everything is energy. Okay? So when you realize when you do scalar measurements that I was doing as a child about the loss and gain of light, okay, and electrical power, then somebody's got to come in this place and turn the lights up. Right? Turn the power up. Those are the electricians of the universe that do that, right? Yeah, that's a light warrior, okay? 
I don't use the word warrior because of the cultural term in which it's used in this culture, because it has a connotation to it that is lower in frequency. Okay, so I simply use light worker. Okay, just somebody that's here that's helping out the girl on the planet and everybody else that's here so that they can learn how light works, right? So they could be a more powerful magnet, spin the speed of the Merkaba, and that frees yourself from being held captive by a vampire, somebody that's feeding on your energy, a parasite, right? So in this particular sense, when I mentioned the earlier video of what I experienced this morning, uh, it shouldn't be uh, of any coincidence to anybody that, that looked at my earlier video about my background, why I went to the University of California, Irvine, and studied uh, a postgraduate course in environmental engineering and ecology and social ecology and then went to the University of Arkansas and went into the behavioral sciences okay so it, I would be certainly qualified given my education to write up a, if you will a psychoanalysis report on the guy that's running this mission that he's a sociopath he's a psychopath okay and, and by their own standards of education to make those kinds of diagnoses, right? I have that piece, I have that document, <laughs> okay? Future proves past, right? So, so as I mentioned to somebody earlier, you know, it's just, why would you ever allow yourself to be ruled over by something that's running lower power than you are? Right? Okay? You're a higher state of consciousness. They're a lower state of consciousness. They're wanting to feed on you, and yet you're allowing them to rule over you? Something's not right with that. That's inverted. Okay. <laughs> That's why love is a law. Love is a frequency. Love is energy. Right? Does no harm. Allows us to be in a state of peace. Helps produce thriving relationships and thriving star nation communities, right? Yeah, of course. And so isn't that something that we would thrive for? Remember, we're back to benchmarking what gives us the greatest value? Okay, so we learn what has the greatest value by and through our experiences. Because we're experiencing energy. So we're experiencing the energy of the communication that we send to others. And we're experiencing the communication of the energy they send to us. So if those waves are in harmony, hey, we're, we're tits, as we used to say, right? Our waves are in harmony. So when they're distorted, or quantum wave entanglement, like a spider's web. I'm tangled up, man. I can't get out of the spider's web. You know, like a spider that's going to hit me with enzymes and just dissolve me and then consume me, right? So you got to release yourself from the octopus of all that entanglement, from running all their programs that they feed on, that they use to power all their stuff. And ultimately, when you think about the archons and black goo, right, we're giving them food. Okay, so monarch is nothing more than psychopathic programming. And unfortunately, and what's so sad is that... Um, and this is probably the most painful part, and of course I've gone through this my whole life. They don't want to be healed. So, um, and, and that doesn't even necessarily mean that they can be healed. Okay? I happen to believe that they can. Okay? I believe that love makes everything possible. And I know that because I've experienced that. I've experienced enough healing in my life with others that others would say, throw that thing in the dumpster. There's no way that that person, in other words, they're worthless. Forget about it. They're gone. And, and I, I can't, I'm, I'm never going to believe that. Because I know better than that. Because I know that the source from which all love comes is the most powerful light, the most powerful energy, and the most powerful living spirit that has the ability to heal anything in the cosmos that's ever suffered. As a result of something that's purely evil. How do you convert something that's pure evil into a pure heart running pure love or pure light with an enormous amount of fire that it has in passion 
and compassion and empathy for everything that is living in the cosmos? Isn't that the ultimate question? How do we do that? So anyway, um, I got to get back to this. Uh, it's basically a, pr a POW camp, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I remember when I was in ninth grade going to Foothill High School, and I think that was in 1966. And uh, w aside from them telling me that I couldn't even get into the prison camp unless I cut my hair, right, my antennas. And so... Um, it didn't matter anyway because little did I know at the time, but I found out later on when they sent everybody home that there were huge SWAT stickers that were painted on the side of the inside of the, uh, the classrooms at this high school. Um, and somebody went into the gym with a 50 caliber machine gun and just destroyed the inside of that gym and then put Nazis SWAT stickers and Nazis... Um, uh, you know, symbols all over the school and then had it set for a bomb to go off at like 10 minutes after 8 where the vice principal was set to come in but the sheriff's department bomb squad found it. So it's not like Americans who were former military who fought in World War II whose sons and daughters know exactly that the United States of America was infiltrated at every level of institution. Okay? Nazis and communism is the same outfit. Dominators and controllers. Okay? Tyrants. Vampires. Parasites. Okay? They don't know how to let go. They always have to attach themselves to something. For energy. Why is it? Anyway, have a good night. I love you all. Be good to yourselves.